Today, let us take some time to study the Word of God together with the sermon titled, The Voice of Heavenly Mother. We have learned through the Bible, things on earth are a copy and shadow of the things in heaven. While babies are growing and developing in the womb, they are still able to distinguish their mother's voice from the voices of others. Scientists have confirmed this phenomenon through various experiments, and the results are conclusive. In a mother's womb, a six-month-old fetus has 60 million brain cells. Eight months into the gestation period, the child's short-term memory is formed. It is at this time that the child develops the ability to recognize their mother's voice. While in their mother's womb, the sound that they hear the most is their mother's heartbeat. Since everyone has a heart, I think you can understand what a heartbeat sounds like. Some time ago, Dr. Albert Lilly conducted an experiment involving many people. In his experiment, he used a tool called a metronome. All musicians are familiar with this tool. It is used to measure the number of beats throughout an interval of time. He gave people the metronome and asked them to set it to the interval of beats they liked the most. Interestingly, the beat that was set was to an interval between 50 and 90 beats per minute. Ironically, this beat was almost identical to the heartbeat rate of a mother. Even once people have grown up, the beat that they like to hear the most was their mother's heartbeat, reminiscing on the time they spent in their mother's womb. From now on, we should be able to deliver mother's voice to Samaria and to the ends of the earth. In another experiment conducted by a psychologist named Seth Pollack, a question was posed to children between the ages of 7 and 12. How powerful is a mother's voice? To assess this, he assigned a very difficult math problem to a group of female elementary school students from grades 1 to 5. They all felt very stressed trying to solve this difficult math problem. He then divided them into three groups. The first group was given the opportunity to talk face-to-face -face with their mothers for 15 minutes. The second group only heard their mother's voice on the phone. This group only listened to their mother's voice on the phone for 15 minutes and then watched a movie for another 60 minutes. The third group only watched a movie for 75 minutes without even listening to their mother's voice by phone. After this, the doctor observed the hormonal reactions inside of the children's bodies. When people undergo stress, a hormone called cortisol is released. The children in the third group produced the most amount of cortisol out of the three groups. Those who, instead of listening to their mother's voice, watched a movie for 75 minutes, produced the greatest amount of this hormone due to their high levels of stress. However, the children who heard their mother's voice face-to-face -face or over the phone became happy and produced another hormone called oxytocin in their bodies instead of producing cortisol. When considering the experiments these scientists conducted, we can understand just how powerful a mother's voice truly is. Two thousand years ago, it was only Father's voice that declared, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. In the age of the Holy Spirit, who appeared with God the Father, the Holy Spirit. Now is the age of fulfillment when the voice of the bride, God the Mother, has also declared, 
Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. In the experiment conducted on the children, who are most dependent on their mothers, oxytocin, the happy hormone, was released just after 15 minutes of listening to their mother's voice. Through this, not only can we realize the power of a mother's voice physically, but we can also realize the power of mother's voice spiritually. When a husband and children come home from work or school, they always ask, Where is your mom? Or, Dad, where is mom? When a child does not see his mother, he misses her deeply. It is the same in the spiritual world. Considering this, we should be able to deliver the voice of Heavenly Mother, the voice of love that we have heard and learned from her, in Samaria and even to the ends of the earth. When we listen to our mother's voice, our body releases oxytocin, the happy hormone, whether over the phone or face to face. Then shouldn't we let people hear the voice of Heavenly Mother? We need to let people hear the voice of Heavenly Father and Mother in this challenging, desolate, and robotic life that people live on this earth. In the age of the Holy Spirit, God the Father testified about Heavenly Mother, saying, Elisha followed Elijah, Joshua followed Moses, Peter followed Jesus, and I follow Mother. Why did Father come to this earth in the age of the Holy Spirit and say, I follow Mother? For the heavenly children who sinned and were cast down to this earth, the most vital and joyful sound is that of our mother's voice. We must never forget this. In this age, when Heavenly Mother says, this is how you must be united, you must take care of each other, you must love one another, we must become the children who not only deliver her voice to the members, but also put her words into practice. What everyone wants to hear the most is the voice of Heavenly Mother. On the earth, when children cannot hear their mother's voice, they become anxious. Therefore, mothers always play with their children and talk to them. Whether it sounds like nagging or the sounds of love, Mothers always express a message of love to their children. But sometimes, doesn't their voice come out in a high-pitched tone? Nevertheless, mothers always wish for their children to have a happy future. That is why children always miss their mother's voice. When you return to your home, please talk with your children frequently and speak to them about God and the Kingdom of Heaven. I believe that having such memories will lead them to the path of becoming gospel workers in the future. Just as the voice of a physical mother has such power, it is the same with the voice of our spiritual mother. Let us open to Revelation chapter 22 and take a look at the power of mother's voice. Let's read the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 17. In chapter 22, verse 17, it says, The Spirit and who else is speaking along with the Spirit? As you know, the Spirit is God the Father, the male image of God, right? Since the bride is the wife of God the Father, who is she to us? She is God the Mother. Father and mother say, Come. In order to bring happiness to their children's future, they say, Come. And let the one who hears say, Come. Let the one who is thirsty come. And let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. To you and I, the voice of our Heavenly Mother is a voice that we will never, ever forget. When we return to Zion, where father and mother invite us to come, we can receive eternal life 
the blessing of the kingdom of heaven and the forgiveness of sins that have been prepared in Zion. Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother have already prepared tens of thousands of blessings and joy that even the angels would envy in the kingdom of heaven, the place where we hope to enter. This same scene appears in the book of John, chapter 7, verse 37. At that time, who came and said this? On the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, Father said, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. In the age of the Holy Spirit, who comes together and is proclaiming this alongside Him? With the addition of the voice of Mother, there is nothing more we can hope for as children. Since we can now hear the voice of Mother, oxytocin, the happy hormone, does not only last in us for one hour, but as her children, this spiritual happiness is in us every moment that we are with her. No matter how stressful or difficult the things children may experience are, the voice of Mother removes all of them. Everyone, isn't that why we should have Heavenly Mother? Shouldn't we follow wherever she goes? Let us be with Heavenly Mother until the end. We should engrave the words of Father, I follow Mother, deep in our hearts once again, so that we can be with Mother forever. Let us turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 66, and take a look at the blessings of the children who are with Mother. Let us read Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 10. Chapter 66, verse 10 reads, Rejoice with Jerusalem, and be glad for her, all you who love her. Who is Jerusalem in the book of Galatians, chapter 4, verse 26? But the Jerusalem that is above is free, and she is our mother. In other words, rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her, all you who love her, meaning, all you who love mother. Rejoice greatly with her, all you who mourn over her. For you will nurse and be satisfied at her comforting breasts. You will drink deeply and delight in her overflowing abundance. For this is what the Lord says, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the wealth of nations like a flooding stream. You will nurse and be carried on her arm, and dandled on her knees. Looking at the scene, it is the happiest moment for a child. This is a happy scene and a happy situation. For children, being with their mothers is more joyful than an amusement park. The prophets sang and described the most joyful moment on the earth. Let us look at verse 13. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you, and you will be comforted over Jerusalem. In addition to such prophecies of the Bible, Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother have come to this earth for our future happiness. They have established the way of truth of the new covenant and walked a life of sacrifice and hard work. However, we can see churches that do not understand the truth, denying Heavenly Mother and even Heavenly Father. We must always follow Father's way and Mother's way correctly and walk on the path of glory that Father and Mother have opened for us. That is why the path we are walking on is narrow. It would be great if the path could be recognized and accepted by all people in the world. However, when Jesus prophesied about this age, He spoke about the people who would walk on this path. He said, The gate is so narrow that only a few find it. Although we are few, shouldn't we live a life aligned with the prophecy while walking with Heavenly Mother? 
The voice of mother is the voice that says, Let the one who is thirsty come and drink. We should listen to her voice correctly. A mother's voice is absolutely essential for making children happy. For this reason, the prophet Isaiah said, Those who love Jerusalem will find great peace and remain at peace. Isaiah depicted the happiest moment that we could experience as a child by singing in Isaiah chapter 66, verses 10 through 13. Now let us turn to John chapter 10. Let us read the book of John chapter 10, verse 25. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep, what do they do? Listen to my voice. Heavenly family members have the spiritual ears to hear both Father's voice and Mother's voice. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Through this verse, we can see that the voice of Father is also truly precious to us. Moreover, the most peaceful time for a child is when a mother on this earth conceives a child and the child hears his mother's voice and her heartbeat from in the womb. We call our parents to ask them how they are doing. Fathers, I ask that you please understand this message today. Whenever our fathers answer our phone call, we get a little nervous thinking, what should I say to him? However, when our mothers answer our call, we talk comfortably with her, don't we? Of course, there are those who do not get nervous with their fathers. There may be families who communicate well with their fathers. However, in general, the reason why the phone calls with mothers give children greater peace is because they heard their mother's voice and heartbeat constantly in the womb. This is what scientists have determined, so that we can refer to their findings. Do not feel embarrassed by this. A mother's voice and a father's voice are both necessary for children. That is why it is written in the book of John chapter 10, My sheep surely know my voice. Since we know the voice of God, the happiest moment is when we hear God's voice. Thus, we should diligently preach the truth that father and mother have taught us and put into practice the teachings that mother has given us with all of our Zion family members. By doing so, I am sure that our lost brothers and sisters will recognize the voice of mother and be able to return to Zion. Of course, we must understand and realize the basic truths such as the Passover and the Sabbath day as well. Through them, we should listen to the voice of our heavenly parents who say, I love you to the end. I will never forsake you. I will never lose you. I hope that by listening to their message that contains their profound love, we will be able to overcome and stand up when we are lonely or struggling and when we are faced with various problems. Let us take a look at the record of the prophet Isaiah concerning the fact that Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother are always with us. Let us take a look at Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 together. In chapter 41 verse 10 it says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Verse 11. 
All who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgraced. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Those who wage war against you will be as nothing at all. For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. God is our spiritual parents. They are our father and mother. When we hear the voice of father and mother who say, Do not fear, we can have great courage, can't we? I will help you. I will be with you. I will make those who quarrel with you be like nothing. Let us move on to chapter 43. In Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1, it says, But now, this is what the Lord says, He who created you, Jacob, He who formed you, Israel, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are. Who are you? You are mine. When you have your children by your side, you say, My baby, you are mine. What is the most joyful expression that every child loves to hear? You are mine. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead. Since you are, how does God say we are? Precious and honored in my sight. God is our parents. To parents, the value of their children is indescribable. Isn't there a children's story that shows just how precious children are to their parents? There was once a poor couple who had five children. They lived as servants in someone's house. In the town, there was a rich man who had no child. One day, he said that he would like to adopt one of the servants' many children. The father thought that if the rich man adopted one of his sons, the son would no longer be hungry. He would wear nice clothes and live in a nice house. Therefore, the father returned home and discussed it with his wife. They asked each other, which of the five would be best to send? We don't have enough food to eat or enough clothes to wear or enough heating to withstand the cold winter. However, if our son lives with a rich family, he can live in wealth all the time. So isn't it better to send one of our children? He had this discussion with his wife. And after thinking about this all night, morning dawned. Neither the husband nor the wife could choose one. The eldest son was the most needed for supporting a family and to restore the family's finances. The youngest son was too young and still needed the love of his mother the most. The third son was too weak, so he needed the care of his father and mother. The second son also had a reason. The fourth son too had a reason why they couldn't send him. Parents' hearts are like this. Of course, there may be ways for them to live in wealth without being hungry by sending them to a rich family. However, to the parents, their five children are all precious. They're more valuable than any treasure in the world. God regards us in the same way. 
After we sinned in heaven and came to this earth, we haven't done anything righteous, and we do not have any special talents or abilities that are better than others. Nevertheless, God considers us precious and honorable. That is why He said, I will carry the burden of the sins of my children on behalf of them. He came to this earth and did not hesitate to shed His blood on the cross. According to history, in the time of Moses, God Himself became the burnt offering that was sacrificed on the altar every day. He did not hesitate to do so. We must not think of these things in the Bible just as regulations or rituals. Through them, we should think about the heart of our Heavenly Parents. Our Heavenly Parents have never forsaken us, but have been tolerant of our wrongs, forgiving, and constantly embrace us even 77 times. Let us become heavenly children who can follow the true path of father and mother. Let us see verse 2 again. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead. Since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Considering once again the fact that Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother consider us so precious that they gave up their bodies, we must do our best to let all people of the world run to the place where Heavenly Father and Mother invited us to come to. We should be able to put the teachings of Father and Mother into practice and build up our faith in them. According to the book of Revelation, chapter 19, what do our righteous acts become on the bride? Doesn't it say that they will be a beautiful robe? As those who are befitting of such a gracious robe, let us never forget to give gratitude to father and mother. Even though we may be a little tired in our present life, let us cheer up by listening to mother's voice and be courageous to preach the gospel in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. What does Mother teach us to do with our brothers and sisters? Be united with one another. Love one another. Live in harmony. Without love, there is no unity or harmony. Father spoke to us these same words. Let us move on to the book of Matthew chapter 5. Let us take a look at the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 21. You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, You shall not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Who said this? This is the scene where Matthew, the writer of the Gospel, recorded the words of Jesus, that is, our Father, who came to this earth in the flesh. Let us see verse 22 again. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to a brother or sister Raka, Raka is a Hebrew curse. It is used when Hebrews curse one another. Anyone who says Raka is answerable to the court. And anyone who says you fool will be in danger of the fire of hell. 
Since God has made us aware that there are such judgments among God's judgments, let us make Zion more gracious by practicing unity, harmony, and consideration for our brothers and sisters along with tolerance and forgiveness. Then, won't Zion become a place where the voices of joy and singing will never cease? We must not follow the evil habits and evil deeds we've learned in the world when we come to Zion. We must get rid of them with the Word of God. Previously, if we got angry more than ten times a day, now we should cut it in half and then cut it in half again. By doing so and diligently training ourselves to be godly, we will eventually become what father and mother want us to be. Father and mother were scorned and insulted by people because of us. Although they felt shame and contempt, they endured everything only to save us. We must not get angry at little things. It is not gracious to the husbands or wives who are not in the truth, nor does it set a good example. It should not be said of us, you say you believe in God, but can't you have a better character? Today, while clearly remembering the voice of Heavenly Mother, we must live our lives with the voice of Mother always dwelling inside of us. As long as the voice of Mother remains in us, we can always be happy. Since our spiritual energy contains the happy energy of oxytocin, I would like to ask all of you once again to live a gracious life of faith and walk the path of the gospel with Father and Mother. By remembering how much Heavenly Father honors us and how much Heavenly Mother exalts us with love, let us carry out the mission of the gospel that has been entrusted to us, delivering the voice of God's gracious love abundantly. By this, I would like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.